Hello ladies and gents, we're now looking at uh, component 1, learning aim B. Um, if you do reach this video, it means you've done everything in learning aim A, so well done. Um, just to summarise, that was a research task, looking into different user interfaces, exploring those different features, and hopefully you will have had some, re uh, some feedback from your teacher, and uh, you will have had an opportunity to go back and make improvements, develop the work and have that ready for the real thing. Now, some of you may uh, go ahead then and go and do the real uh, component or section of the component uh, before trying this. Uh, depending on where you are, some teachers may say uh, that you're going to do the entire component all in one go. Uh, others might break it down. So I have a feeling that I might break it down. So if you're in my class, you will have done learning aim a the the mock and then the real thing before starting this anyway let's talk about this um section properly here before we go on to these sections so we'll have a, a separate video for each section as i did in the last series of videos here before we go on to uh, this assignment brief just want to mention that uh, if you are in my class i will share this folder uh, with you this will have everything you need for this um the, the mock and the section of uh, of this uh, component, learning aim B, and there is a lot to learn here. I will also make reference to the pages in the book. I'm not going to show you the book anymore, uh, just because you know you should know which book I'm referring to. If uh, you don't, then you should look at the uh, videos for learning aim A, and then you'll understand uh, which uh, or which book I am making reference to. Um, so let's look at this. So. As with the previous uh, series of videos, I said that you need to understand the assignment brief before you actually go ahead uh, and, and on the, uh, the work itself. Uh, you need to understand what it is uh, you need to do. And the only way you can do this is by understanding the position that you've been put into. May I also take a little st uh, section here, a second here, sorry, to uh, remind you that this here is a mock. So this here is a scenario that may not be in fact will not be the same as the real thing. It's going to be similar because it's designed to Im imitate and emulate the kind of skills that you need to do for the real thing. Uh, so the story will be different. Okay, so in my situation here, so if you're in my class, we're going to be using this one here. And you'll also see it looks pretty much the same. And you, you might look at it at first glance, you might think, oh, it's the same thing. Why am, I asked to, why, am I, why am I being asked to do the same thing again? But it's not. It's learning game B. It is component one still because there's three sections to this. There's a second one now. And this assignment is about the project plan. So it's all about how you organize and how you plan for this project itself. And there's a number of different skills and techniques that you can use uh, with the high grade distinctions and merits. You need to show uh, a, a variety of each one of those things. So let's look at the scenario here. Your project plan and designs for the new user interface. So that's the title for this section. It is now time to create a project plan and design a specification that shows an initial design of the user interface that meets both user requirements and design principles. So now that you've done all the research from the previous section, you're gonna start putting it into practice. But before you do that, you need to plan. So this is how you're going to organize things. So you need to th start thinking about what you're gonna do, when you're gonna do it by, and things like that. You've been asked to design a touchscreen information system at Draws in Medical Practice. So you know this device, this new UI, user interface, is going to be on a touchscreen device. We know the name of the organization is Draws in Medical Practice. The system will be located in the reception area of the premises. So basically, as soon as you walk into the doctor's this medical practice, you'll see a touchscreen pad there. Um, and it's designed to take the pressure from the main reception. So um, they obviously must have some busy periods where there's a massive queue of people waiting to be seen and, and, and you know listened to or make appointments with at the front desk. So they're designing or they're hoping to have this on the inside, in the inside or the front of the reception area or the waiting room. That way those who are comfortable with using this, they can use this rather than waiting at the reception and hopefully reduce how many people are waiting there. Um, the public will be able to obtain information about the facilities, including online booking systems and pub uh, and pub. Um, let me just write to delete that and repeat prescriptions. 
So if you've never been to the doctor before, this may not make any sense. But if you have, this should sound familiar. It's no different from how you would be, what kind of facilities most doctors uh, or medical practices will have in, in on offer. So these are the things that they expect. So remember, this will be given to you. You don't need to do anything here. So in the real thing, you're going to have something like this. It may not be a medical practice. It may be a completely different business, different scenario, but it'll be similar in terms of what you have to do. So let's understand this five, so there's a five, sorry, four, five, six bullet points here of things that they expect your user for interface to include. So it needs to have a dashboard, meaning the first page, the welcome page. It needs to show details of the opening and closing times. It needs to have information about the facilities. For example, uh, there should be a page where you can make appointments or cancel appointments or go and ask for repeat prescriptions. So you may be um, on some kind of medication and you need to be on the medication for a good three or four months. It'd be a waste of time for you to go and see the doctor every single time for the same medicine, you know, and that's why sometimes uh, they allow for you to ask for prescriptions, repeat prescriptions, saving you the hassle of having to see the doctor again. It would have to get signed up by the doctor anyway, so it makes it easier and it alleviates the amount of uh, footfall and traffic and human traffic that is people in the actual place itself. So, you know, making appointments cancel appointments and repeat prescriptions. Um, next one, where the closest chemists can be found and how far they are from the medical practice. So basically maybe an address or a map or a link to it or something like that. So, you know, someone might come out of a doctor's uh, from the, their appointment, they've just seen the doctor, they know they need to get uh, some uh, tablets or something or some kind of cream or what, some kind of medicine. And, you know, they should be able to click on this tab tablet that's in the reception area and see where the closest me uh, uh, chemist is so they can get that medicine there and then. Information on current uh, uh, sponsored charity events they may have, uh, they might be involved in some kind of charity, and notices from the medical practice. So, you know, if there's any current changes coming in or if they're doing anything for, I don't know, Halloween or Christmas or something like that. So there's a number of things that this UI needs to show and have uh, links to. Let's have a look at what else they want. They want the touch screen interface to be easy. Well, that's obvious and quick to use. They want to have increased user attention. They want um, confidence and familiarity, meaning it needs to be consistent. It needs to follow the design principles so you understand that it needs to have a house style that matches the company itself. The, the, the company in this case is draws in medical practice. Yeah, but like I said, and I, you might get sick of hearing me you know, saying this over and over, but the real thing will be different, so just bear that in mind. Um, using attention and confidence, that's just about making sure that you're keeping their attention. So are you giving instructions when you need to give instructions? Are you giving too much instruction? Is there enough writing? Is there too much writing? It's that kind of stuff. But there are, you, you know, if you've done uh, component one, uh, uh, learning aim A, all this should make sense because that was the whole point of the research um, because you're going to use that knowledge that you acquired from that section of the component and then start using that with this design side here. Now you, you have four weeks to complete the project and draws in medical practice have asked you to develop a project plan so you have to show plan uh, as the managers are concerned about the timings, cost and security issues of the touchscreen information system. So you need to come up with a plan and this is going to have to be shown to a manager or managers at this company and they want to know basically what you plan to do, when you're going to do it, uh, how long it's going to take, things like that. So you can't just go into it. You know, if, imagine if you were working in, in, in industry and uh, you have been asked to make a, a new car or a pair of trainers or a bag or a phone. You couldn't just say, here's my design, I'll go off, off you go make it. You, you need to think about how long those elements will take. And that's the point here. And that's what you're learning here, hopefully. Um, the project plan should include the following. Project planning methodology and tools, smart aims and objectives. Don't worry if you don't know what these mean. We're going to go through them uh, as we go through different, to each section. User requirements, accessibility needs, and design specifications. So there's a number of things you need to do. So before we go any further, actually, no, yeah, let's read through this part here and we'll go on to section one in the next video. So what I will do is rather than go through every single point here, uh, will allow you to pause the video here, just have a little read through here um, as to what it is that you need to do for part A for this task uh, and there's a part B as well. So if you just pause for a second and just read through uh, this list. Okay, so if you are back now, you'll see that um, the 
The first section is called the project plan. So that's going to be the title that you, you, you're allowed to see and obviously you're, you're allowed to use. In this project plan, there's going to be a number of different things. So there's going to be eight separate things. And inside some of these, there are a couple of other things that you need to look at. And some of these are, you know, you've probably never heard of. You probably have heard of mood boards and mind maps, which is an easy one to do. Um, but you may not know what... Um, a PERT chart is or a critical path diagram is. You may not know what a Gantt chart is. Um, but we're going to go through them. But these are the things that you're going to have to take off in your uh, project plan for task one, part A, all those items. And you need to make sure that your aims and objectives that you decide to have are smart. And we're going to go through those as well. So there's a lot to learn here. But as I said, the book has, um, you know, everything you need uh, for this this you know this coursework uh, but not to mention not not to also forget that I do actually have some of the resources that I hope to share with you as well and there's tons of stuff online and YouTube that you can also research yourself if you just go into Google as an example or go to YouTube and just type in Gantt chart and you'll see an example but we're going to go through some in a moment the evidence that they need to see for this so how do you prove that you've done this task well they're going to see a task list they're going to see part cha uh, pert charts critical path diagram a gantt chart they want to see a mood board or mind maps they want to see project requirements somewhere so i would suggest you use these as titles but i've sort of used most if not all of these in the sections themselves anyway so when you do the real thing whether you use your practice or mock one in front if you have that in front of you great then you can start using the same kind of titles um and adapt them accordingly uh, to the scenario that you're going to be in um but even if you don't and you're working in a different school this is your go-to thing this is what you're going to look at uh, as this to, uh, as you know as to say uh, as, as a means of ticking them off as you go through um and making sure that you've done them all they want to see project uh, cons constraints and potential risks. They want to know what con contingency plans you've put in. So that's basically what kind of backups do you have. So if you know what risks there are, what things that could come in the way, what you can do about it. Yeah, or what ca could you do about it? They want to see justification of the methodology that you use as well. And don't worry about this word. We're going to talk about it in a, uh, shortly as well. Task B, I'm going to allow you to uh, give you an opportunity to pause here to have a read through this list as well. Okay. Uh, hopefully you've paused it and you've had a chance to read it. So you'll see that there's a, a not, a, you know, the list isn't as big as the one uh, previous to this, but there's still quite a lot to go through. So the first section, part A, is about you doing a design, so a project plan, and that's all about you organising yourself. So all of this is about organizing yourself looking at what you need to do when do you need to do it by how long do you need to get it done you know you don't know when you'll get something done by if you don't know or at least have an idea of how long something's going to take so that's what you need to do before you can decide how long something's going to take you need to know what that thing is so there's a whole array a whole list of things you need to do after you've gone and done the planning you then go and do your initial design so this is not your final design so you're going to create a comprehensive initial design for the user interface. And this, your design specifications should include the following things. So you know this part is about designing your design specification, writing down your design specification. So you need to talk about user requirements, the audience that you're aiming at, accessibility needs, the purpose of it, input and output requirements. You need to talk about hardware and software requirements. You need to, talk about store, you need to have a storyboard. They want at least four. So they'll tell you if it's in bold, it means you need to do that. If it's less than that, you've failed. They want to see an effective test plan. So they don't want to see you actually doing the test just yet. It's just you showing how you're going to test it when you come to actually doing it. And so what's the evidence for this section? Well, you see here's a whole list again. They want to see user requirements. So these are like little subtitles for this, uh, this section. Input and output requirements, comprehensive annotated storyboards. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to give you some examples for that as well. Hardware and software requirements and a test plan. So... Further down, you'll see the criteria. This is what your teacher, if it's me, myself, if not someone else, will have to use to mark your work. This is what we're looking for. So for distinction, you need to do this. For the merits, you need to do that. For a pass, you need to do that, and so on and so forth. And really, everyone should be looking at, at the top here. Um, it's important that you understand you know, some of the correct terminology. So you can see create an appropriate project plan for the design of a user interface, with uh, which makes full effective full and effective use of project planning, full and effective, which means they want to see more than three or four, I'd say five planning techniques, uh, which we'll go through soon. I create a comp comprehensive initial design that shows how it will meet all user requirements. So you, you can't show that you've met user requirements until you've explained what those user, user requirements are. And this one, the, the um, um, specification, design specification is so important. 
Moving down, you'll see sometimes, in most cases, they'll give you a list of things that you can go to websites that might help you with this section. Um, it's well worth looking into this uh, when you do decide to start working on the mock and the real thing. Have a look at them. They'll be there for a reason. They're not just there for no reason. It's there to help you. If you don't make use of it, you're wasting opportunities and you're making life much more difficult for yourself. Right, we're going to stop the video here now. And in the next one, we're talking about the first section, section one.